I take it we all are blessed here this morning. Let's give yourselves a clap offering. I just want to say Happy Women's Month to every lady here. And I just want to remind you, you know, I've put my talit on to remind myself, this is a Esther talit to remind myself that I am a strong woman. And each and every woman here sitting is a strong woman. You are God's masterpiece. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the apple of God's eye. And so I just want to remind you, you know, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And so this morning, I just want to say thank you to Pastor Dan and also to Auntie Imba for this opportunity. It is definitely an honor to stand here and speak God's word. The topic came about when Auntie Imba called me and she asked me to minister on the 13th. So I was in the car with Mish that day going to fetch my son from school because Brennan was tied up at work. And I was trying to figure out what am I going to speak about? So I thought of something, but 25 past one that the next morning, the Lord woke me up. And this is what he wanted me to speak on. So I'm going to speak about a woman, not just any woman, but a woman that played a significant part of my life. It, I call it a significant relationship because that is what my message is on, is a relationship, but not just any relationship. This woman played a pivotal role in my upbringing. She was my, as I call her, my ma. You may call yours your grandmother, your ayah, whatever you want to call her, but mine was known not just to me, but to my family as well, as Ma. She was an extraordinary woman, a very strong woman. I actually feel, I'm actually paying tribute to her today, this month in fact, being Women's Day. When I say she was an extraordinary woman, I mean it, so let me explain. She was a very strong woman, who loved her family. She never had the best life. It was a very tough life, very difficult, um, especially because of who she was. She never spoke English like you and I. Um, she actually spoke what someone would call um, in, um, kitchen Zulu or something to that effect. But not just that, um, you know, she wasn't, as I'm saying, she was not like you and I. Um, but we've learned to speak her language. You know, whenever we, we went there, we, we, most of my time anyway was, spe was spent with her. Even after school, when I went to primary school, the first place I went was to my ma's house. And so I grew up with her and I began to speak her language. She had five children, four boys and one girl. She was married to my grandfather, Daniel Klein. She also raised, besides raising five children, she also raised her grandchildren as well as great-grandchildren. At her latter years of, I'm talking 70 years, she was actually changing nappies, babies' nappies at that age. She was taking care of my great her great-grandchildren, and also her grandchild. And it was so surprising for me because she never spoke English. She was, I won't say she was deaf, but um, she had problems. For example, um, if, when we spoke to her, she'd actually have to lip-read. So she would lip-read what we are saying. And also, it surprised me because she, she took care of these babies and I'm talking about at 70 years old, but she heard them when these babies cried. The first thing she did was go run to the room and to go and pick them up. So 
I'm saying at 70 years old, I don't, I don't know if there's any other grandmothers here at that age that actually took care of great-grandchildren at that stage with everything that, like I'm saying, she had. But her hearing was a problem. Like I said, she never, ever wore hearing aids. She would lip read. And if anyone had to ask me who my role model was or is, I would say my ma. I spent, as I said, most of my childhood life with her. I went there every day, like I said. And I actually had to kind of stop visiting my grandmother because of schooling my mum, because my mum had to work shift. She, was, uh, she used to work shift work. And so my mum started introducing my sister and I to house chores. So I didn't get to spend time with her after that. But I always looked forward to spending time with her on the weekend. Sometimes on a Saturday, I, weren't, I wasn't able to go and see her, but on a Sunday we would. And it was so special on a Sunday because my aunt would come from Phoenix and she would come to my ma's house and everybody would meet at my ma's house. All her children, the grandchildren, we were all there. And the first thing my, my ma did was go and put, the minute she, she knew we were coming, so she had the kettle on already. And the minute we walked in, the, the, tea, the teacups were all laid out, the sugar, the tea, the coffee, whatever you wanted was laid out. I'd still ask because I was old enough at that stage, so I would still ask her, Ma, can I help you? She'll tell me no. Well, obviously I had to speak in her language, so. <laughs> um, but she'd say no because I don't know, for her it was like her way of taking care of us, taking care of us, and she actually looked so forward to having her family with her just to spend time with her even if it was just that little bit of time. She eventually passed away at the age of 80 on the 15th of January, 2012. That was plus minus seven months after my brother's death. But one thing I can say, even up until today, my grandmother, I love her with all my heart. And she's dearly, she's dearly loved and dearly missed. And this brings me to another relationship. I want to speak about a relationship with God, and that is my message for today. I want to just show you the similarities of my relationship with my ma and the relationship with God. Okay, the difference here is that my ma is gone. But one thing I can tell you is that our Lord and Savior is alive and well today. He is living. He is today, tomorrow. He is, he, he, he is. And you know, last week we sang a song, He's Alive. And you know, it just, I thought about what the Lord wanted me to speak about, and I was like, absolutely, you are alive, Lord. You are alive and well, you know. And we, we have him, the greater one that is within us. That is who we have. The Holy Spirit is within us. All we need to do is listen to that voice. And that's what's most important. And so I'm going to go on and say, um, this relationship that I'm talking about, I'm going to generalize now. Is we grow up going to church or Sunday school or catechism, and we learn about God. We start to develop a close relationship or this intimate relationship with God. And then life happens. Things happen in our lives that take us away from our Lord and Savior. And when I'm talking about things, I'm saying, for example, I'm going to use this as an example. You, you go to high school, you meet friends, could be the wrong friends, and what happens is you end up doing wrong things, um, you no longer attend church, and these kind of things. And so, you now, you now actually start partying, you learn about discos and stuff like that, 
By the way, I was not one of those. <laughs> I was not a disco person, so movies was my thing. Um, but this is what happens with our young people today, is that things are introduced, like I'm saying, discos, the drugs, alcohol, all this takes place. And this is where our, our society or our kids get lost in, in all this that the world, the worldly things, I'll, I'll call it. But um, in all that, they also lose their identity. They lose themselves to this. But I'm going to say something. Even although all this takes place, God is standing by, waiting, watching and waiting, waiting for you. He's waiting for you to turn things around. And you don't need to do anything because the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. The victory is yours. So you walk in that victory. You walk knowing that you are loved by God. And that is what is most important is that you know, it doesn't matter if we lose our way. I, I, my husband's one of those, you know, who lost their way. But he's actually come back, you know. And he is so much in love with our father. And, you know, this is what I'm saying. I'm, I'm generalizing like I'm saying. We, we go through these things. Like I said, my grandmother's, with my grandmother, the same thing happened. Life happened, things took place, I stopped, I never get to see much of her, and it's the very same thing with our relationship with God. We tend to lose our way. But God is always there, waiting, waiting for you to come to him. And so, if there's anyone here that is in that position right now, I ask that you will turn to him. He is your strong tower. I'm just going to speak about, you know, in John 15, it speaks about the vine. He's the vine and you, he, he's the vine and you are the branches. You know, it's important. You want to have or to grow in that intimate or have that personal relationship with our Lord and Savior. You know, the, it's, there's a um, John 10 um, he's, it says, my sheep hear my voice. And if you have that intimate or that personal relationship with the Father, you are able to hear his voice. You know when he's speaking. And like I said, because I know that morning when he woke me up and he gave me this, because he started with my grandmother and I was trying to figure out, but why is he reminding me of all this? And then it's, he started putting the pieces together and I was like, okay, Lord, so I'm going to speak on a relationship. And so it made sense to me afterwards because I had to end up writing stuff down. I, I wrote these things down and I said, to, okay, I now understand that, you know, this is what the Lord wants me to speak about. I'm not sure who needs to hear it, but whoever it is, I pray that your heart will be softened and that you will hear his voice because this is him. This is all to glorify him. This is not about me. This is about our Lord and Savior. You know, the only thing the Lord actually asks us to do is to believe. To believe in him, that he is your Lord and that he is your Savior. The other thing he asks you to do is have faith. And pastor preached about that, faith like a mustard seed. And so that's where it all starts. When you turn to the Lord, you just need to believe and have faith. And, you know, it's like a baby, for example, starts having formula. And as they grow, solids are introduced. And from solids, they go on to chewing because they have now have teeth. They are able to chew meat, chicken, whatever it is. But it's the very same thing with your faith. Your faith starts out as a mustard seed, as small as a mustard seed is. It starts out like that. And the way that you, you would actually help your, or your faith to grow 
obviously you would, it's important to read the word of God. Get to know the word of God. Praise him, worship him. Prayer is what actually incre increases your faith. Listening to his voice. In this relationship, you will understand the beauty and wonders of our Heavenly Father. And as a believer, the Christ-likeness of character develops in each one. And as a restored and deepening walk with God increases. A prayer life is important, especially to maintain a relationship with Him. I want to just give you some benefits of a having this personal or intimate relationship with the Lord. Firstly, he is an encourager. You know, uh, we were going through something last month. Well, it's actually not didn't start last month, but it's been way before this. Uh, my family and I have been going through a crazy time. But, you know, the one thing I stood on was my prayer and my, my Bible. I read the Word of God. I, I stay in the Word of God. That's, that's how I go from day to day. Because that is my lifeline, if you may call it. And that is also your lifeline, or should be your lifeline. Um, you know, I was speaking to about four weeks ago, um, after church, I spoke to Sister Shomaine. And so she was surprised that I resigned from work. So she asked me, so what are you doing now? So I said, well, I'm at home. <laughs> so she was like, okay. And so we were busy talking and we were talking about life and the circumstances that we are in and we are facing, you know, and all that. But that very same morning, because of everything that was going on, I think my faith could have been a bit shaken but the Lord told me that morning, before I came to church that morning, he gave me Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you know what's so funny? Because he gave me that about four weeks ago. And the very next week, Brother Charles, in, when he did the invocation, he read Hebrews as well, Hebrews 11, speaking about faith. And it's like the Lord was speaking to me, not just to me, but through others as well. And that's how the Lord works. He works through others as well. And so I was telling Sister Shemaine, you know, this is what I've had to stand on. This is my, the, the verse that the Lord has given me that morning to stand on, you know. And a couple months before that, Brendan had a dream and... He was having a dream and he saw three crosses and there was hills. The crosses were actually on the hills and there was a storm that came by and wiped everything away. The only thing that stood was those three crosses. What does that say? Hang on to your faith. Because that's what it meant is that those three crosses were, was the Lord saying, hold on. It's just a season. It will pass. And we all go through those seasons. Life bring, This is what life is. But the most important thing is that we hold on. Keep trusting. Keep believing. Because this is the relationship that you develop with the Lord. When, when you know him and you know who you are, you know that you are a child of the Most High God. This is what we know, is that we can stand against anything. And because that's what the Bible tells us to do, is stand. Stand steadfast in his love. And so, like I, was, I come back to Hebrews 1, like I was saying, that is the way God encouraged me. He might, he might, he's always giving encouragement. It might be in verses, scripture, whatever it is, he will give you that encouragement. And so that is one, one of the benefits. Another benefit is he is the sower of the word. 
like I was speaking, when you're in a storm, you know, you pray to him. He sows that word, like he did with me, encouraging me. He sowed that word, Hebrews 11.1. 1. He sowed it into my heart. He is also the reaper in glory. So when you turn to him, he changes your life around. He reaps the glory. And that's why I say he is, he is the reaper in glory. Because everything that we do is not because of us, but it's because of what the Lord is doing in us and through us. He is also a rewarder, another benefit. As, is, as the word of God says, he, he is a rewarder for those who diligently seek him. He is also your protector, your shelter, your defender, and your hiding place. I'm sure we all know Psalm 91. And so this is what our Lord does. This is a, one of the benefits. You know, when you're in an intimate relationship, he will shelter you. Yes, you may go through storms. The Bible tells you, you will have trials, you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And so if he has overcome, we are overcomers as well. And so there's nothing that we can't do, because as long as you have the Lord, you can do anything, anything. He is the breath of life. As it says in Genesis 2, he actually breathed into Adam, giving him life. And that's what he is. He gives us life. And we cannot walk the path alone without our Lord. In Genesis 2, 18, in Genesis 2, 18, I'm going to go back to the book of Genesis. You know, when, in the same way that God actually, God created Adam. And then he wasn't satisfied. He said, he said, no, I, he can't leave him without anyone. So what did he do? As it says in Genesis 2.18, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. So, if God made Ammon, Adam, sorry, Adam, and he, he realized, no, Adam can't be on his own. So, he made Eve out of the rib of Adam. Well, he took the rib from Adam and made Eve. What does that say about the Lord? This is the kind of relationship or companionship that he wanted with us, not just Adam and Eve, but each and every one of us. It's about that relationship. It's about, it's about a companionship as well. Another helper besides our partners, for example, is the Holy Spirit. In John 15, 26 to 27, it says, I will send you the helper from the Father. The helper is the spirit of truth who comes from the Father. And when he comes, he will tell you about me. So we, we have a helper, and that is the Holy Spirit. And that is who actually communicates with you or through you, is that Holy Spirit. You can hear the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, as the Word of God says, He will tell you of things. He will tell you of things to come as well. That's what the Holy Spirit does. And so I'm going to go on to say, another benefit is He is our shepherd. Psalm 23. He's always attending to His sheep or His children. Hence, he says, he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. So even when you're going through your trials, when you're going through your storms, whatever it is that you are going through, know that he says he will never leave you, nor will he forsake you. Another benefit is that 
He is your provider. He is your Jehovah Jireh. What we need to understand is that in this relationship, you need that you need to have this relationship with the Lord. There's so much that He will reveal to you. You know, the Lord is, I, I can't even explain it, but I love him with all my heart. And, you know, we, che- we, we actually teach our kids the same thing as that. You know, they might not understand it because they're in a different phase of life or going through their own stuff, you know. But we have to be constant in our faith. We have to keep speaking to our kids, you know. Because we want to train them up in the ways of the Lord. And that is what our, our duty as parents is. That is our duty, is to train our kids up in the way to, of the Lord. You know, and I think when I think about it, you know, the Lord, he's awesome. He's awesome because, you know, like I said, he's our provider. I just want to read um, Genesis 1, 28 to 30. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, Look, I have given you every seed, bearing throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. What kind of relationship is this? This this is so awesome because our Lord made sure in Genesis that we were provided for. Everything was provided for. And so, I don't know why we feel that um, we can do it all. But it's not that we can do it. It's that he can do it through us. And that's what we need to understand and realize is that God has given us everything. Everything has been given to us. All he's asking for is for you to have that relationship with him. Be personal with him. He wants you to be able to come to him. You don't have to go to your friends. Go to him. Take it to the Lord in prayer. And that is what it's about. Taking whatever it is that is worrying you or it says, cast your burdens. Another scripture says, cast your burdens unto me for he cares for you. And so we should do that. Cast our burdens unto him because that is what the Lord wants us to do. Is This is the relationship he wants. Is that we should be able to come to him openly. Lord, this is where I'm at. What, what is wrong? You know, and like I said, we have the helper, the Holy Spirit, who reveals things to us. And so it's not like we left all on our own. So I'm going to close because of time. But before I close, I just want to... This is from, from my side. So today I stand here... And I ask, if this message touches your heart, please take this opportunity to come back to your first love, that is God. Do not wait until it is too late. You know, as I said, God is waiting with open arms. If there's anyone that doesn't have a personal relationship with him, He's waiting. He's waiting for you. He says, knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you will find. And so this is all we need to do. He's waiting on you to turn to him. And he will do the rest of the work. All you need to do is turn to him. Like I was saying, You don't want to wait until there's no time. Who knows what you are waiting for? Because 
The second coming of our Lord is near at hand. He wants to have that intimate relationship with you. He wants to show you how much he loves and cares for each and every one of you. Think of it as a love story. Just you and God. He's the bridegroom. You are his bride that he's coming back for so that you can spend eternity with him. Isn't that awesome? He wants to spend that eternity with you. And so I'm going to leave you with the question. Do you want to spend eternity with your lover or with God? And so I hope and trust that you will have a blessed day. And I pray that this has touched someone's heart. Thank you so much. We want to thank God again for the ministry of his precious word. We pray that the Lord will just bless his daughter and use her in the days that lie ahead. This is Women's Month, and I know we're going to have some favor even as the women come and minister to us week after week. We have another woman coming in next week. Don't miss the meeting. Come in, bring your numbers. Bring those that are within the household. Let them be part of this service. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for this beautiful time that we could spend with you. We thank you for the daughter. We thank you for the affection her mother had and, and for those around her, Lord, that have inputted into her life so she can be the stalwart that she is today. Bless her and her household, oh God. We're excited about the little one that has come in and we pray that you're going to bless them immensely. We bless, Lord, all of our women here again, oh God. We pray that we will have the energy to come to church and to bring others to church, oh God. That's what it's all about, impacting what we have, oh God, with those around us. Bless us all, Lord, even as we go home full with your word. May we go home, Lord, knowing that you will stand by with us all of the time. Now bless us. Lord, we ask this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, for Jesus' sake. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you, church.